Welcome to the 16th episode of Dauber's Draftcast. In this episode of the Draftcast, we are talking with Tyler Matson about his average draft position project. He is our first ever non-Dauber guest, but he interacts with a lot of us on here. And actually, he was a past member, which I forgot. But so you have to be a past member to be on here still counts, I guess. Yes, yes. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that one season with Minnesota would work. <laughs> No, I think you just talk to me so much. That's another way to get on. Just talk to me, and then that yeah, works. There we go. Um, oh, and also the information you gather with this project can be important for people doing prospect drafts out there to see where their favorite prospect drafted may drop, rise, when you should grab them, should you grab them sooner or later, whatever. That gives you a good idea of what's going on. Um, and then as always, I am... Your host, Pat Quinn, Associate Editor and Cover the Washington Capitals team at Dollar Prospects. Um, we are going through our September edition of the 32 and 32 team recaps where we note graduating players, risers, fallers, and along with the teams, writers, personal depth charts, and top 20 project, top 20 prospects. Um, August 32 and 32 already went. So check it out if you're listening. And then remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. I have a lot to go through. Like, I am surprised. Um, I subscribe and listen on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. We're also powered by Instat. You can also pick up your copy of the Fantasy Prospect Report and New Fantasy Hockey Guide at dauberhockey.com. Um, also, I have an additional plug. Hey, <laughs> Um, promoting the website mcdavidforpicks.ca from friend of the show Hayden Soboleski, who you interact with uh, in the Dauber Hockey Fantasy League, and he beat you. So he did. He I is the champion. Say, yeah, you have to say he's really good too. Yeah, he he is really good. And have you used his website mcdavidforpicks.ca or tweeted at it? I I've seen it. I had no idea it was his until uh, the previous episode when you plugged it and. Uh, I was like, oh, that's Hayden's? No way. I'm going to have yeah. to go back and check that out. Additional plugs for Hayden. Oh, I, I should also finish the plug. Um, the McDavid for picks.ca lets you propose NHL trades with over 100 unique GM responses based on cap hit, positional depth, team rebuild, status, injury history, and many more factors. If you're bored at work, propose some trades at McDavid for picks.ca or vote on daily generated trades on Twitter at McDavid for picks. That's the at sign. Um, let the creators know what you think as they work to create the most authentic trade simulator available. Also, he's co-creator. Sorry. But we'll give him extra plugs. Extra credits, right? Yeah. All the credits. Because he has one cool dude, <laughs> I guess. That he is. Yeah. All right. So, Tyler, explain your projects to all the listeners. And, yeah. So, the, yeah, the average draft prospect project. Um, it's a mouthful and I can't even say it correctly when I try. So I just call it the ADP project comes off the tongue way, way easier. Um, AD the ADP project. ADP. Sounds like AD and P, but ADP. Right. right. Yeah. The average draft <laughs> position project there. Wow. I think I got it out right that time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to come up with a better name. Uh, it, it really just started uh, on paper uh, for one of my leagues. Uh where we have leftovers, uh, prior draft year players and everything, and trying to fit them in with uh, the draft year players was kind of difficult for me. So I wanted to get an idea of where, you know, players were falling. And uh, the Dauber Forum, plug that, uh, the Dauber Forum's awesome and uh, frequented it a lot. And they do a, uh, a thread every year where people would post their results. So I kind of went off of that and get an idea of where guys were. And from there, I kind of just kind of built on it. And, you know, I started asking people for, you know, send me your results. I want to see your results. I'm, I'm curious, you know, the curiosity of it is what really made it what it is today, which is basically send me your draft results. I log it. And then I kind of track the trends that I'm seeing and where players are going. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a trend analysis of the draft, hey? Yeah, exactly. But, but you also don't have a website or anything for it, right? You have a Google Doc that comes up where people just have to DM you directly. 
Right. It's a, it's a Google doc. I usually release it uh, right before uh, season start um, because I'm trying to collect, you know, all the drafts and then get it out. But uh, on my Twitter, I, I do a uh, update, uh, try to do it weekly. So, you know, it's helps people out uh, as their drafts are upcoming. Um, yeah. People can always ask you too. I've, absolutely. I've seen you answer some questions like, Hey, where's this person going? Yeah, no, happy to answer questions. I love the uh, the questions and the feedback and the, the DMs. I've had lots of uh, great conversations with people just, you know, hey, my draft's coming up, you know, where is this player going or my format is this. I was thinking of this person, you know, what are your thoughts? And I try to not give too many opinions because, you know, I'm not right all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but when it comes to the trends and what I'm seeing, you know, that's factual. That's what happened it's not my opinion it's you know a league had a draft that's where the players went and so i mean it's i, I just think it's a, a great piece of data and it helps uh nerds like us that are <laughs> into the super hardcore side of uh that always have to beat the other people in the league exactly exactly the, what the, um let's uh what twitter account can they find you at? i always save it for the end but i think this will be important to get out uh at, at mats and hockey uh so m-a-t-s-o-n hockey easy. easy usually if you uh search a player's name that you're interested in you might see one of my my threads because you know twitter search functions pretty sweet it works <laughs> um yeah yeah okay well i guess uh since you are in the works of almost finishing one for 2022 because who knows when you know people have their drafts people have them early mm -hmm. people have them mm -hmm. late um how many submissions did you get for 2022? So I'm up to 67. Uh, I didn't update at 65. It's been kind of slow going. So I think everyone's kind of waiting till that last couple of weeks now. Um, I had 11 come in pre NHL draft. So it's one of those things that uh, as it progresses, you know, we had world juniors. Are we, have I seen any like real movement since then? Not really. Uh, I try my best to keep everything. The minute I get uh, results in, I try to get it logged. I definitely keep it in order, but there's still no telling. Like there's still, I still have things to iron out to actually, you know, get everything time stamped and to actually get a handle on, on the real trends, but it's a work in progress. Yeah, it works pretty well. I keep sending you the pictures through DM. So, and you seem to not complain about that. So that's good. Yeah, it's got to no, be I extra take... tedious to be like. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> it is time consuming, and it is. I mean, I, I log everything, and uh, I do my best to, uh, you know, be, be as factual and accurate as possible. But uh, I take them screenshots, uh, spreadsheets, pretty much any way you'll send me the the results. So I'll, I'll get it logged. So just don't write it on yourself and send it in. Yeah, that might yeah. scare them. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Only I can do that. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's go into one first big one. Um, how to, yeah, because this one's kind of cool because everyone thought at the draft, like Shane Wright's going number one, right? I mm -hmm. bet first mm -hmm. 11 drafts all had him up super high. Then the draft comes and he goes number four. Can't right. see my hands because of the background and the weight, but if I put it in front of my face, I think you can. But yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 right, right. I, <laughs> you I, can I see saw him it. showing up and coming out. <laughs> and I just pretend I'm magic. Anyway, so how did the uh, draft sort of impact the results? I mean, I know the first half's kind of like, or first bit, sort of a smaller sample, but. Oh, well, I think that's uh, one of the things that surprised me the most with this year is that uh, normally the NHL has a bit of uh, sway in how the rest of the fantasy drafts play out. Um, right falling to four wasn't really that. I mean, he's still the number one guy and he's going to finish the number one guy. That was something that I didn't after he went for. I was like, oh, we're going to have a new number one. And uh <laughs> Nope. Wright's held on to it. I mean, he was unanimous before uh, in the 11 drafts that happened before the NHLs. Uh, from there, I mean, he's held on to it. I think, uh, check the notes, he's gone in 40, first uh, 41 of the 67 drafts. So, hmm. I mean, it, it's pretty solid right. So, uh, Slavkovsky, uh, 19 of 67, and then it falls off a cliff from there. So. <laughs> 
it's kind of, you know what your one, two is going to be. It's either going to be Ryder Slavkowski, uh, unless they're a Cooley fan, which, or uh, Nemec, or uh, the name who should not be spoken uh, that took Nazar number one, just to mess with me. In <laughs> the ADP probably project. Hattie, I think. I think <laughs> Hattie just did his own and sent it in. No, 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 it was not. It was I think not. I was uh, uh, my one of my leagues was the one that had Luke Hughes first, was your first ever first for Luke Hughes. Oh yeah. Last year. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was just a we, points only one. And I think they mo- I think all these people are getting devils in this one just to trade them to me later because I'll probably take them. <laughs> well, Luke it, Luke has done one of these. Yeah. It's amazing. it's amazing. Uh I you know, I wasn't a Luke Hughes be- believer in I am now. I certainly am now. <laughs> He's looking good. to be a, a beauty. Yeah, I guess I was going to say that Bree started World Juniors. Would it be tough to impact your league there because a lot of them already drafted? I don't think exactly, there are many exactly. too many surprises. Like maybe Camel would maybe pop up a few more times for other people, but I don't know. It would just came so late uh, after you had a majority of your submissions, right? Exactly, exactly. And it, it, it's, you had a question for me earlier, and uh, I can't remember what it was, but basically it explains how the pre draft, I don't have a big enough sample to yeah. get a real sense of uh, where, you know, what fantasy thinks of them before the NHL <laughs> takes them. And so I, I'm really hoping uh, as the project grows that there are more uh, pre drafts, because those are always the funnest to go over and to really kind of judge, you know, where people think they're going. I, I would like my league to move to a, a pre NHL draft, but I mean, it's, well, it takes, I, <laughs> takes I a know. lot. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I could ever do that. I, I like to know yeah. where they're going to draft. Cause exactly. At least I guess a year ago, if it's like they're drafted by Montreal, you're like, okay, well, they'll be developed terribly unless they're actually too good for their awful development system. And now they're like pretty good. Or even Florida back in the day, you're like, well, Florida took them, but then they have to go play in Florida's AHL system, which was so. Exactly. But, you know, it adds the mystery of it. It adds <laughs> yeah. the mystery of it, you know, and, and I totally get why you would want to know because, yeah, you, you get a better judge of, what organization they're in, their competition they're in, what spots yeah. that they can, uh, you know, fight for. I mean, you just have a better overall view. And that's why I preach, I, I mean, development time. I'll take a, a player that's developed over a, a draft year player pretty much always, yeah. depending. The uh, notable. There's a few notable ones. There's, yeah, there, yeah exactly. <laughs> there's always, there's always an exception to the rule. Don't get me wrong, but uh yeah, I'm, I, I always lean very leftover heavy in my, my drafts. Um, you know, you may give up some ceiling doing that, but your floor, you just raise your floor exponentially. And uh, I've always had good luck doing that. Um, but it's flipped a little bit in my league now where people have kind of picked up on that. So now they're picking up leftovers and I'm getting sniped left and right. So I've, kind of, <laughs> I've now switched back to now I'm, I'm really checking and looking for uh, – the draft here guys i'm i'm combing through them harder <laughs> yeah I, I find like uh let's say pre-draft you had like david your check and you're like all right i want to take him high and then he gets drafted and you're like okay columbus now has 87 defense like can i still take him <laughs> uh and your your check is looking good and i mean he he's another good example of how the adp project i mean it works well but i mean there's things that you have to understand like his adp right now is uh 7.61 uh, but he's ranked sixth. Yeah. So basically his rank is a better representation than his ADP. Uh, so that's why I try and explain that I also include a high and a low. So, you know, the highest they've been selected and the lowest they've been selected to try and give a, a better picture. Cause obviously, you know, the, the average draft position doesn't always tell the whole story. Uh, and so David, he's been uh, dragged down by a lot of outliers, uh, mostly leagues that D-men don't have as much value. Uh, and that's why I really strive to have a bigger sample because that t- kind of smooths everything out and you have a kind of a better idea of where guys are going. Yeah. And speaking of that, since you get a whole bunch of different leagues than you, I think I have one that has 
uh, positions count and one that's just forward, one points only, one's extra. Now, there's going to be a variation in players um, depending on the type of league they're drafting, even maybe cap leagues or something like that. So how do the differences in format impact your results? So again, it, the, once the sample is big enough, it doesn't really affect my results at all, really, uh, because it's just such a big sample that all the outliers kind of smooth out. Uh, but it's easy to see when a draft comes in and you see, say, uh, Juracek going at 20 or Nemich going at 13. That's a, you know, that's a red flag right there that yeah. that's obviously <laughs> a league where D-men don't aren't valued as high. And then, you know, you'll have a league where Nemich went one. Yeah. And that's probably a league where it's hard to get, uh, you know, top prospect defensemen. So it's the, the, what I found doing this project is the variety of formats is so wide <laughs> in the range. I mean, we were talking a little bit pre-show about my uh, main, main leagues uh, and how different and unique they are. Uh, I've definitely found uh, doing this project that, I mean, there's so many different leagues. There are so many different formats. There's so many different, you know, scoring and everything else that a player's value fluctuates so much that it's really hard to give, you know, advice and opinions on, on certain players, especially like trades and stuff like that. I see it all the time, you know, on Twitter, yeah. like, well, well, do, what about this player, this player? And it's like, well, I'm going to need a ton of context to <laughs> actually try and answer this question for you. Yeah. I guess something that just came to mind. I don't know how long you've been doing it, but have you ever seen a goalie go number one? Uh, this is year four. Um, I think the only ones we'd have you'd have a chance for would be I think the Costa and Wall stat in case they were a goalie heavy leagues. Yeah, and no, I didn't really see that. I have uh bookmarked on my uh Twitter page, I have the uh prior results and I can look real quick because it shows the lows and the highs. Yep. Yep, wall stat went one. Uh, I turned be. orange too. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know how, but I have turned orange. Everyone. Kosa, Kosa also went one. Yeah, that was the year. Oh, oh so did okay, yeah, and everyone. Yeah, As and, yeah. I think Askarab went two. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. So I just wanted to see. Yeah. So goalies would go higher because. What is it? Also, I believe, oh, when was Cedar taken? Uh, trying to remember. I think that was three years ago. Mm. I'll just check it right now. See when he was drafted. I'm trying to remember. There's so many players. It's so hard. Four years. It was uh, 2019. Yeah. So that's and, years uh, ago. Yeah. His ADP was 19.08. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. him at the end of the second round. I felt pretty good on that. Yeah, he had a high of six and a low of 36. <laughs> but I bet so, you as soon as like that pick looks to have worked. Right. Everyone overrates Isaac picking. So his players go a lot higher than they maybe should. Right. And it's still uh, not exact science here. No, and le like last year, uh Wyatt Wyatt Johnson's probably one of the ones that is really done. Oh uh, yeah, he was well, I think because everyone was like, who's this? Like, I bet uh, Chinikov, too, when Columbus picked him. I don't even know if he was. I think I Chin grabbed him at the end of the third round in one of mine. Chinikov was a fun one because, obviously, pre-NHL draft, nobody. Yeah. The, <laughs> the minute he was drafted in the NHL, he was taken pretty much solidly throughout from there on out. Yeah. Yeah, Johnston, uh, his ADP was 43.59. Yeah, and now it looks like a steal for all those people. And now, exactly. So, yeah, it is fun to go back and and to, to see all the movement in players. You know, it's, I think Zegris was like eight or nine, ranked yeah. eight or nine. And, you know, Turcotte was up there at five or four. Yeah, because you know, if a player gets taken third, you're usually going to take them high in your draft. Exactly. Well, I was a big yeah. fan too, you know, Badger and all. And then, yeah. <laughs> nope. Oh, yeah. Hurt my soul. All right. Well, let's hang back to the 2022 draft. Okay. Or fly back to it. Um, mm -hmm. 
So we wanted to talk surprises. So what were some big surprises? Surprise, what I got, uh, I got Krasinski, uh, you know, going seventh, uh, third D-man off the board, uh, but he's ranked 13th, uh, fourth D-man. I think he's, you know, he's kind of in that mix with uh, Radiachuk and uh, Minchikov. He's one of those guys that I don't think he's getting enough respect, and especially in Chicago where they've gone full scorched earth. And, yeah. you know, these are these are players like Nazar and, and Krasinski that are really going to be leaned on. You know, they're going to get every ounce of opportunity. And th those are, you know, I'm a, a big fan of opportunity as well. I When, yeah. a, well, <laughs> when, a, when a team, it, yeah. Yeah, in three years, they could be traded for uh, – Kurczynski could be traded for 18th overall in three years and then <laughs> Nazar for, I don't know, 27th overall in three years. Yeah, th so that is Chicago true. Is going. <laughs> so, yeah, that so is... then would you trade 7th overall for Debrinkat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in yeah. In Fantasy League? <laughs> oh, man. It's, yeah. yeah. Let's, 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 let's ease off Chicago for a little bit. They've been through enough. Yeah. Or not enough, actually. They probably need uh, more. But anyway, so what other surprises did you have? Uh, Lam Lambert's fall. Lam Lambert's fall uh, hasn't really hurt his stock much. Uh, no. He's ranked 18th, the 13th forward coming off in the ADP. So uh, that's another one that's surprised me a little bit because uh, I was a huge Lambert fan coming into the draft. And uh, it's one of those things that when I see a, a player fall and fall hard, it's a huge red flag for me and it hurt my soul. I told myself <laughs> pre NHL draft that I was like, if he, he slides hard, I'm going to fade him. And he slid hard. And I mean, it took every ounce of my, my willpower to just be like, you know what? I'm going to fade him. There's other guys I like in that range. And so now we shall see whether or not <laughs> my, my uh, instinct on letting the fallers fall. So you didn't take him, hey? Eh? I did not take him. Uh, I actually went for the home run pick and uh, went Lane Hudson. So, <laughs> where did you pick? Uh man, that that draft. I can't even. It was in the mid twenties, early twenties, mid. That was a big swing. You must be following uh, some of our Dauber writers a little too much. That love the Habs. <laughs> ah, well, no, I just. Uh, I mean, one of my leagues it, it counts uh, D points as a category. And it's kind of, uh, again, no, if he like, works, he'll be awesome. Like exactly. That. Exactly. So he was one of my home run swings. Uh, I, I lean, like I say, very leftover heavy and, uh, I, 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 I'm filled out on floor and I needed some real big swings. And, uh, I've really liked what I've seen out of lane. And, uh, I mean, that IQ is off the charts. It just, it, it really is. And so yeah, I have. As bias it gets put aside and he gets a chance, I, I think he will run with it. So I already sent you this one, but I think for my team, I had about, I don't know, five picks in about eight picks, something like that. And I took uh, a few guys, but in there, I also took Lane Hudson and the guy who's the Montreal team fan, like messaged me. He's like, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> He's That's like, how it. did you not let him fall? And then I managed to trade Hudson and like a first in 2025 for Georgiev, which I think is pretty good for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially because Colorado, you don't have to be good to be a goalie there. You have to just be a goalie to be a goalie there. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't even get me started on goalies. I know that I'm pretty vocal. Uh, uh, on Twitter about it because I, I employ, you know, I know the, the zero G uh, has gotten a lot of hype lately. And I mean, I was, basically since I've started, I've punted goalies. I punt, <laughs> I punt goalies any chance I can. I just, I hate goalies. Goalies hate me. Uh, so I, I try. So, they're too, of an, too much of an unknown aside from the like two main ones now, which is like Vasilevsky and Shesterkin. You grab them, you're good. Can't grab any, just wait. Right, but then it comes back to format and everything else. I yeah. mean, both of, both of those goalies are in my league. Uh, their cap is asinine. So, <laughs> I, except for Shesterkin, and he's on a golden deal. But I, I, I forgot that he was actually traded in uh, the sister league of mine, and the payment for that, I, I think it was uh, Mason McTavish, like two firsts, <laughs> which were are going to be lotto picks. Like it was a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, but like you said, it all depends on your. Um 
league status. This one just wins or just points. So nothing else really matters what wins in shutout. So no, oh, okay. Yeah. That's why I was like, yeah, do it. Good. <laughs> Works for me. Sold. Yeah. yeah. Uh what other surprises? I think we only went over two and then I kind of cut you off after Hudson, which mm. is I guess your own surprise. I don't know. It's yeah. exactly your own surprise, but I don't think that counted in your numbers. He should be all over the place. But we'll get into that in the next one. Because I'll ask Okay. Him. Yeah, yeah. So uh what what else? Uh, that was pretty much all I had for the surprises because okay. I mean, I've, I've been staring at this for, you know, <laughs> forever for, for months now. And uh, so everything I see, it doesn't really surprise me in any, you know, I'm sure I'll see a draft or two that's surprising, but now that everything's kind of, you know, the tears have really fleshed out. And uh, I mean, it's not really surprising. Oh, you know, you, you'll that, get uh... a draft every once in a while. That's like, what the heck was that? <laughs> but I mean, in general, no real surprises. Uh, notable highs. I know you wanted to talk about highs. Oh, no, I, I was going to do that. I was going to do that after. Okay. That, that's the okay. next one coming up. But I think you said, oh, what did you just say? And then I forgot off the top of my head. Yeah, magic coming back to it after I edited it. Um, so um, I figured, Tyler, let's go over, like I said, the high, low, and averages for some prospects. But I'm just going to look at the uh, draft board and go from there. You think that's an okay way to do this? Yeah, sure. Wait, because you have yours, and I'll just go off of ones I want to pull out. But I think we should probably go through the entire, I don't know, a whole bunch of the top ones, hey? Eh? Like uh, Slavkovsky, what would he be his high, low, and then average? Uh, his average is 2.16, and he has a high of 1 and a low of 5. Oh. I will add an asterisk on the 5 because that was also the person that took Nazar at one because he had the top five picks oh. <laughs> and, and he decided to play with the ADP project. Uh, he took Casper at two in that draft. And so that's also Casper's high. So <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to him, but yeah, it's yeah. Oh, so basically it's last going top three, the odds of him sliding to four are slim to none. So. so outside of that one where it was five, he was pretty much anywhere from one to three. Hey, maybe an occasional it, four if people load up on an, an occasional four. I think just a quick. I have so many drafts in here now. I have to minimize it to get everything <laughs> to fit. Yeah, I only see about two or three off the top four. Uh, okay, where well, he's then gone what four. about uh, Nemich, the New Jersey Devils pick? Nemich, uh, 4.77, uh, a high of one and a low of 13. Yeah, and the 13 is the D are counted as high. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan Cooley. Cooley is 2.67, uh, high of one, low of four. Oh, hey, he went lower. Oh, okay, the Slivkovsky one really messed you up. Hey, did he, that mm -hmm. guy pick Cooley too? Or? I, he did t take Cooley. I think he took him at three. Oh, okay. So he didn't mess it up too much. And then Albert, no, uh, no. the one who was supposed to go number one, but did it in Shane Wright. Shane Wright, number one. He is the top ranked player at 1.58, uh, high of one, low of four. Oh. So he has not slid past that four spot. And again, I don't, unless something crazy happens, I think that'll hold. Yeah, I don't also think I should go through each one or we'll be here until Thursday. Um, <laughs> uh, I post the updates. I post yeah, the updates. There so. is that too. Um, let's see. Well, I still want to go a few of the top ones. Cutter Goche, did he ever go number one? I don't think so. But well, He did not. Stuff. His high, uh, Cutter Goche's high was four. His low, 23. Oof. Uh, yeah, ADP at 8.58. Uh, and he was one of those players uh, pre-NHL draft I, I kind of pat myself on the back. I said he's going top five, and uh, he did. Oh, good job. So, yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I got that one right. I think some of the people who also put him very low might be people who have him confused with Connor Geeky. Right. And Connor <laughs> yeah. Geeky is another Connor one. Connor Geeky, yeah. How, yeah, Ge Geeky's kind of been – he's been one of those guys that either people like him or they hate him. Like, yeah. there's not a lot of middle ground going on. Uh, his ADP is 16.45. Uh, high of six and a low of 32 oh. and he is actually he's ranked 16th and he actually went undrafted in one of the 67 drafts oh. which was actually like boggled my mind I had yeah. to look through it three times to be like I'm not missing him <laughs> he just wasn't taken like and there was other play like I think uh Jordan Dumay I think was taken or Yanni Nyman I can't I can't remember who it was like a player that's like 
and you're going to pass on number 11. <laughs> yeah, you're going to take this guy that was picked 100 it's, over the guy that picked 11. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, so, again, yeah, there's you, the drafts you see. I mean, those are the surprises are just those one offs <laughs> that it's like, this makes no sense. But wow. Yeah. I think there's we the results. Over, and then we went over the next three. So then, a uh, player who I think could honestly still have the highest, um, upside out of this whole draft of Matthew Savoy. How about him? Savoy is uh, after the top, you know, the big three, he's, he's that uh, fourth forward off the board, uh, 6.56 ADP, uh, high of four, low of 13. Yeah. I mean, you can pretty much guarantee that he's not fallen past 11. I think he's only fallen past 11 like once, and that was 13. Yeah, he's only fallen past 11 once. All right. So, well, yeah, about, you're not alone there. People yeah. like people are liking Savoy. I do. He never fell to me, but I didn't really have many. I don't have many first round picks anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's the price you got to pay. Hey, for the, the, the price you pay. <laughs> the price you pay. That's why I do this so I can learn all the other ones. Um, <laughs> let's go from players who should always be drafted from this team because anytime they're drafted in the first two rounds, they're just apparently automatic NHLers. Um, Pavel Mintnikov from Anaheim. Yeah, so Mint was actually a guy that I was watching closely because I was hoping he'd fall in my draft. I think I was picking uh, in the 15 or 16 range, and I think he went eight or nine. Uh, oh. to, yeah, I was surprised because I was thinking, you know, he'd kind of get the, the Krasinski uh, treatment, and he didn't. I mean, granted, he, he's one uh, spot behind him. Uh, his ADP is 15.79, high of seven, low of 35. Um, I'm commonly seeing him in the 20s. Uh, obviously, my leagues don't work like that. But yeah. <laughs> if if he's in the 20s, I like him. Uh, you know, I I know Anaheim and they 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 got Drysdale and everything else, but but he's Anaheim almost, just drafts amazing players all the damn time, and I don't think right? they get enough credit for it. No, I I, I completely agree. And uh, the Black Book was actually who put me on uh, De Pavel. Yeah. Uh, I watched a little bit more, and uh, I mean, they're they're very high on him, and uh, it kind of threw me, put him on my radar, and watched him. I was thinking, and and plus Anaheim, they have great schedules every every year. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, I want this guy. And uh, actually, hold on. Speaking of Anaheim, I want to get this one out. Um, last year, two years ago, Zellweger. Uh huh. Do you have his average draft? I'd want to see that. Yeah, I had it up. I was actually going to bring him up because I want to say while he's... you're looking, like for me, like I say, anytime a player is drafted in Anaheim and like a high in the 60s, you got to take them. Like if you let them yeah. fall in your draft, they're always an NHL player. It's the craziest thing. Um, ADP 34.67, a high of 15, a low of 104. <laughs> so yeah. somebody, shout out to whoever took him at 104. You Shout are... out to whoever took him at 15. <laughs> yeah, that too. That they too. Yeah, you... and they're like, yeah exactly. You... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You both get kudos. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what about probably the funnest named player of the whole draft in Rutger McGrory? So, uh, McGrory, hold on. Let me pull up my other sheet. Oh, sorry, I'm making you. I, that's oh, you're good. I'm asking to transfer. I'm like, no, another no, I, I, have, I have tabs. I have tabs galore. <laughs> okay. Tabs on uh, tabs on tabs. <laughs> Tabs on tabs. Uh, his ADP is uh, twenty point four five, a uh, high of nine and a low of thirty three. Uh, his most common draft uh, slots twenty five. Yeah, yeah so I feel that's... like he he falls in points ones, but in like banger ones, he'd be higher. Exactly, and he actually got the uh, geeky treatment and was not drafted in uh, only the one draft, and it was that same draft. Oh, so maybe I'm, a, I'm a... go ahead. I'm a... I'm assuming that draft uh, is a points league and also probably has leftovers. I'd have to pull it up. Uh, that's <laughs> another thing I forgot. That I probably should have said in the very beginning, uh, the project, uh, all these uh, contributions are given to me. I keep everything anonymous. Uh, I try and do that because I know some people are kind of sketched out about, you know, I don't want people knowing, you know, our drafts and that kind of stuff. So it was one of those things that I kind of got that vibe early. So I decided, you know, everything's anonymous i i keep a record just so i'm able to pull up a draft to you know make sure everything's right uh but other than that it's 
not released to the public. It stays with me. So please send your drafts. Yeah, I, I don't mind making fun of people in my league. I think there you had to take a few off of one I sent you before because I was like, I don't know why this guy drafted these players from 2016, but he did. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that one. It was the weirdest thing. It was like, okay, well, we just let him do whatever he wanted. It was, it was definitely odd. Um, then what? Uh, so we went McGordy. Yeah. I think. Oh, Lecker. Yeah, Lecker Miyake would be pretty good for Vancouver. I feel like if a Canucks fan is there early in the draft, he would probably be your high. And then low would just be. You talking about Canucks fans? You talking about uh, Lecker Miyake? Yeah. 10.73, a high of five, a low of 19. I think I drafted him at nine. Uh, it was between him and Camel. And uh, I, I went ahead and went with uh, – because you don't know what's happening with uh, Besser. You don't know what's happening with Vancouver, really. And uh, the kid's got a wicked shot. If he can, yeah. you know, if he can uh, smooth out some of his other warts, I, I think he's a player. So, Speaking of him and Kemmel, though, Kemmel also went to Nashville. And Nashville first-round scoring forward selections are very hit and miss because they don't ever seem to get used all that well. I think right. the last one, the part three of the fantasy prospect report chat I had with Ben and Alex, we were like, yeah, Nashville just doesn't seem to develop very well at forward. And I even talked to this about Curtis Ryans, who follows, who's the Nashville writer. It's like they have lots of exciting prospects, but like when do they ever come up and do anything or are given a chance to do anything? Well, I am so glad Tomasino is changing that. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, Oh no, I'm a I'm a believer. He's taking that next step. You're a Tomasino I, I am a Tom. <laughs> I'm a I'm a believer in the Tomasino. Um, I mean, he put up great numbers with not a lot of ice time. And again, you know, yes, it, he could get the natural treatment, but I, I do think that it's they're turning a, a leaf there, and they need talent. And yeah. I, I think I think he's he's there to do it. I mean, so. Johansson can carry the team though. This year, for sure, he'll make that email worth it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> um, he's he's definitely going to recreate last year for sure. <laughs> yeah. Book it. Him and Duchesne both. Right, exactly. Yeah, um, Kemmel, since you're deciding between him and Lecker Miyake. Yeah, so uh, his ADP is nine point eight five, uh, high of four, low of twenty. High of so, four, holy. Yeah, well, I mean, so they're basically in that same type of range, you know, five nineteen, four yeah, yeah. twenty. Uh, but it, it's clear that Camel's valued a little bit more than uh, Lekromaki is, but it, it does come down to personal preference, especially, uh, like I said, the, the tiers have kind of fleshed out a little bit. I could probably go over that real quick because uh, there's that clear three, you know, right, Slavkovsky, Cooley, uh, clear don't four. Don't name them. Just give, them the, just give us the thing because then we might ask too right we don't want oh, okay. to spoil anything <laughs> okay well uh clear floor <laughs> nemich well we're, we're going over you know it's just a quick top 10 yeah. uh Savoy, we've already went over your check uh we've already talked about cutter and nazar nazar we can probably talk about uh the nine and ten is is Kimmel and uh lacrimaki and uh they are kind of that flip-flop interchangeable when, once you hit about pick nine in your draft, you're going to see Camel or Lekromaki go. Probably. And then after that, the draft's all over the place? Or you probably yeah, have a good it, solid next 10 and then a good solid next 20, it, I feel. Yeah, yeah. It, it opens up and into a, a bigger uh, tier of uh, Kasper, uh, Matejchuk, Krasinski, uh, Minchikov, Kiki, Yurov, and uh, Miroshinchenko. All, I mean, they're all flip flop flip instead of you know the two two players then you got what is that two four six seven players yeah. that are i mean just all interchangeable yeah all right well then how about this guy because this guy i don't know i feel like people either love this prospect or don't like him with lee and bishel from dallas uh, i don't feel man. like he would go very high and i also feel like he would be left off a couple uh, he has been left off a couple, but he's actually gotten a lot of love, uh, more love than I, I mean, I think the part of the love is obviously he went 18 in the draft. So he's going to get a little bit of a, you know, the bump up there. Uh, he is 36.61, uh, high of 18, low of 79. He's, uh, 
he's uh, ranked 31st. So he, he's uh, going in drafts. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. And then I guess the biggest question mark of the entire draft was Miro Shinenko. How about him? Yeah, I can't. I'm going to butcher all the names in his. No, don't worry. I did a list list. job. You're all good. (laughs) Uh, He is 6.34. He has a high of eight, a low of 32. And uh, his most common draft slot is 15. And his rank is 15. So he's, he's fallen right there in that middle. Um, I actually drafted him. He's another one that I'm super high on. I think, yeah. uh, you know, coming off of the, the, uh, Hopkins lymphoma and everything that he, uh, being severely underrated because of, you know, losing a year and his health. Uh, I, he, I mean, he is a talk for top five pick yeah. and, uh, not that long ago. And I think that, you know, it's, that's one thing I've noticed too in, in the, the hockey circles. It's so quick, you know, the hype train starts and it's just, you know, the player shoots up the board <laughs> and, and, and some guys get kind of just lost in the, in the, the noise and yeah, uh, he dropped way down. Yeah. And I mean, his landing spot too. I mean, you, you gotta love his landing spot because there's not a lot in front of them and they're going yeah. to, they're going to be needing that type of uh, prospect soon. So I don't think they're going to rush him, but also I think that he will get the opportunity when the time comes. So, yeah, yeah, they have a lot of contracts coming off the books in a year or two. So I don't think mm-hmm. it'll come over that fast, but might be three, mm-hmm. four year wait. Yeah. Um, another player from Anaheim and Nathan Goucher. Yeah. So he piqued my interest because uh, Mason, Mason Black uh, is in one of my leagues and he took him. And so anytime you, you watch, you know, somebody you respect, take somebody, it's one of those <laughs> things that, you, you know, it goes in the old memory bank. Uh, his ADP is a uh, 34.32. He has a high of 14, a low of 59, uh, ranked 30th. Most common draft slot is uh, 28. Like I said, he's an Anaheim pick though. So that's why it's like, you got to watch. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I was a, I was a bit lower on him just because I didn't think his uh, ceiling was, you know, he may be a good grinder and, you know, a clear NHLer when it comes down to it. But I just didn't know how much more he had to give. But like I said, when somebody like Mason takes him, well, that tells me that maybe I should have a little bit more belief in the kid. Yeah. I guess big shout out to Mason, hey? Yeah, big shout out to Mason. <laughs> You know, love, love is uh, what he does uh, with his P uh, NHLE and just, I mean, his writing and everything else. And every once in a while, he'll let me pick his brain. So thank, thank you, Mason. Appreciate <laughs> you. That's good. Okay. What about uh, your off from Minnesota? Uh, he should be one that's like high, low. And he said he was in your next sort of tier, but it's like yeah, yeah, people he, being scared because of the passport stuff. But yeah. So his ADP is a uh, 16.76. A high of eight, a low of 28. Uh, most common draft slots, 14. He's ranked 17. Yeah. yeah so, I'm gonna... oh, go ahead. I actually just traded him uh, in that same league <laughs> uh, for, as part of a package for uh, two years of Roman Yossi. Oh, so well, I guess that's not bad. Yeah, I know. But Yurov was one of those kids that I didn't want to give up. But again, that Russian factor and the wait time on him was one of the you know kind of pushing factors that there's also wanting to win money the there's game. also yeah, wanting to, to i yeah i want to win that's that's the whole thing and i'm actually in a rebuild there so oh. i've shifted nobody <laughs> would let me rebuild so i said fine i will trade all my prospects and i'll compete <laughs> darn darn now i have to just win it i guess exactly okay, what about a player that i didn't really See going and another Chicago pick and Sam Rinzel. Rinzel. Ooh. Rinzel is one of those the kids that he was going uh earlier and it's kind of slowed down a little bit. And he's one of the the uh type of players that I stay away from personally because the wait time on these guys yeah. is just silly. Yeah. And so I mean I don't touch these players. Um his ADP is 51.59. Uh he has a high of 25. A low of 102. His most common draft slot is 58, and he is ranked 48th. Yeah. 
So, I, I mean, it, it very he's one of those ones that he varies, but it's mostly in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, I see a yeah, couple guess, 30s yeah. in there. You kind of, I don't know, I kind of forgot he's like forgot he was drafted, to tell you the truth. Like, and just recalling the first round and the first four hours of the draft, I was like, Chicago had three picks. I like completely just keep forgetting that they had the last pick there. All right. Well, that, pick. so I do include the NHL uh, draft in my ADP project just because it's, you know, where they went. Yeah. Uh, and that is his high. So if I'm oh. looking, <laughs> I'd have to manually check her out. I'm seeing 38. 37, 33, 33 is going to be his actual fantasy high. So, okay. Well, let me then move to the player that I have picked in all of my fantasy drafts so far. And Yuri Kulich, what about him? Ooh, Kulik. Kulik, Kulik. If anyone's Kulik. listening to someone who's very smart who keep who picked someone. Yeah, you know, and, and you know what's funny is, is that Kulik was also on my watch list as well because again, I uh value great shot. If you have a good shot, I'm probably paying attention. Yeah. And uh he's actually not the hype's not there for him, which is kind of surprising to me. And he's actually kind of tapered off a little bit as of late. Um, his ADP is 28.95, uh, high of 14, low 49, most common draft slots 22, and his rank is uh, 26. Yeah, he's also he's a player who just is now going to Buffalo, and Buffalo drafted two players, good forwards ahead of him, and how crowded like five players, yeah, ahead of him in the NHL are already going up to the NHL. So it's like he does move into a crowded situation, but I don't, I'm a more of a believer. All right. And and the cream always rises, to the, you know, to the top. It's yeah. that's, you know, I, I've kind of shied away when I look at things, you know, I, I look at opportunity as, as almost the number one thing is I look at. But also, I mean, I crowdedness, especially yeah. when, when the uh, it's prospect age doesn't scare me as much because, uh, you know, if the kid has talent, he's he's going to get the opportunity. So, But yet, like I said, you also need, like I said, the, the opportunity is such a big thing because you look at the Islanders who sort of just barely sort of pushed in forward prospects a little bit, like Barry Trotz isn't a huge prospect pushing guy, but they also had their forwards locked up for a long time and say with the Capitals when I guess Trotz was there too. Like they got their top nine locked up and they'd be like, there's no room for this player who's good. So either they're going to be waived or have to somehow get one of these players traded which in hockey politics won't really go that much because then they could see him as like a playoff warrior right like but yeah i digress into sometimes sometimes you're a prospect (laughs) just to be put up and be like just give him a shot i know we can make it and yeah you have to wait extra long you sit there in your fantasy leagues like why am i waiting so long this guy you trade him for nothing and then you feel bad anyway (laughs) well you know it's 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 always fun to uh you know find the, the buy low candidates and, you know, I, I've, I'm, I, I always preach, you know, don't be afraid to lose a trade and don't be afraid to make trades that look like losers. If you feel like they're going to be a winner. And I mean, like, like I said, I traded your off, you know, do I want to trade your off? I, absolutely not. I just thought that the value was there and that's why I, I made the move. Uh, it's not that I don't believe in your off. I mean, heck I drafted the guy. I, yeah. completely, <laughs> I completely believe in him. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that uh, like Wallstrom, you know, it's uh, you get Byfield. Byfield's another prime example yeah. of you know I see his stock. I think it's going to go lower. Uh, I think that uh, there's going to be you know guys haven't completely soured on him yet, and I think they will in yeah. the next season or two. And it's going to be a little bit before he actually shows his true potential. So there's also there's no room for him in LA to do anything. Like he can't be. He's not a top two center. He's a number three center. And he's exactly. battling with Velarde, who, who knows, might put it all together next year. Then he's like the force. <laughs> exactly. It's why we play the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you should also wait for these larger players who are drafted early and try to make trades for them later, like Lafreniere or Kako and right. Rangers. Like, try to trade for them more. Like you said, yep. try to trade for him. Anyone who hasn't busted out because they have no opportunity and you have an impatient GM, like, target them. Exactly. Uh, so 
Cole Sellinger last year. I mean, he was, he was one of those guys that I drafted. He's the type of player that I kind of lean for again, you know, as a great shot uh, grinder and that who I compare, I, I mean, not necessarily their game and everything is Cutter Gauthier. I see that same type of big kid that's slowly putting it together. Now I think he's going to just show up and especially when, you know, in Philly now with Tortorella and everything else, I mean, probably not, but I, I still, it's that type of young kid that's the maturity is there. And don't get me wrong. I'm not a huge fan of, you know, the kid's six, four, he's going to be great at hockey yeah. type of thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of the, the full build. And uh, yeah, I think Cutter's that player this year. So I'm yeah, high on him. I don't think yeah. he's making the team, but no, I no, I, I don't think so either. He's a good player though. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think people have, him and Connor Geeky a little confused. And that's not to like say anything bad about Geeky. I just think Goche is a player who's a lot more advanced in the same size as um, Geeky and is a little more ahead. That's all. That's all I mean well, by that. Well, and it's a fun year too because, you know, it's been clear, it's been banged through and through bad draft, bad draft, bad draft, bad draft. And uh, I just think that, you know, there's, there's a lot of, NHLers in this yeah, draft. There's a lot of high yeah. end players too that, well, high yeah. end are seen as lower. Like a lot of people are like, this isn't too good. It's like there's a lot of second line scores here who get you good points. Like, yep. There's, and then if they get the opportunity, they could be on the top line. I concur. Another person probably won't be on the top line, but was drafted 29th by Arizona Maverick Lamoureux. What about him? I want to know his. Maverick Lamoureux is uh, 46.21. His rank is 41. He uh, His high is 16. His low is 87. Most common draft slot is 56. So he was always drafted, hey? Not always. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'd have to do the count on him. Basically, after about the top 20 is when, you know, every once in a while a player won't be drafted type of thing i'd have to do the manual count on this yeah, we don't have to get you to do that we don't want to like i said be here until thursday i'll just pick a few more out of round two if that's cool with you, you yeah some yeah. time still yeah oh you yeah another yeah. question yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah you're good that's good uh jagger Fergus. i feel like he's a player who would go a lot higher than his nhl draft slot uh he is his adp is 22.90 uh, high of 12, low of 35, most common draft slots 20. He is ranked 22nd. High of 12, that's pretty good. High of 12, yeah. Somebody, And that was actually a uh, pre-NHL draft. Oh, yeah, no, because he does have a ton of upsides. It's just he's so not filled out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You have small defensemen, and I'm going to go with someone I picked. Um Matias Havilid. Have a lead. Have a lead. Have a lead. The minute, the properly, minute you said Alexa. small, the minute you said small D man, I knew where you're going with it too. Um, he's overlooked. Everyone looks at Lane Hudson, but I'm like, guys, have a lead is also, he's no one to, he's still one you can, I, I forget the phrase I was going to say. It's something to do with shaking the stick at, but in the positive way. Like, don't, like, you know, you know what I mean? I think don't, really don't sleep. Don't, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Okay. On don't sleep on him. Yeah. 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 It. Yeah, uh, ADP, 45.73, high of 24, low of 75, most common draft slots, 31. He is ranked 40th. Oh. So That's he's, cool. he's kind of – he's uh, one spot ahead of uh, Lamoureux at the, the moment and uh, one spot behind uh, Chesley. I think uh, I've seen you talk about this person, and we're probably both going to absolutely butcher his name, but Detroit picked him in round two, uh, Dmitry Butchelnikov. And I you know what? I think he said that you talked about him because he was going up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, he, and like I said, this is the Eiserman thing, right? Eiserman yeah, yeah in, Stevie, in Stevie Y, I trust. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's actually in my notes here, too, just because uh, – he wasn't on my. He wasn't in, on any uh, pre-draft radars. He only went uh, pre-draft two out of the eleven drafts, uh, but he's really moved up. Let me pull him up. He is ADP forty-eight point nine one. He's ranked forty-fifth. He has a high of twenty-three, a low of ninety-nine, and his most common draft slot has been sixty-four. So if you are getting uh, 
him in that range, I think it's an absolute great home run swing. Yeah. You don't think he's maybe going a bit too high or sorry, what was the average? I was coughing while you were saying it. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, I mean, 40, at 48, I mean, yeah, depending. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, if you're in a 12-team league, you know, I, I mean, you're getting him in the, the tail end of your draft. I mean, I'd absolutely take a swing. That would be in the uh, mid-third round for my league. And, I mean, I, I love him there all day long. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What about um, uh, this player? Did he go ahead of his namesake in previous years in Jack Hughes? <laughs> uh jack see i think he's getting the, he's getting the name treatment and i know i was wondering i was like is he going like a lot higher because people are just thinking or maybe like they are drafting jack hughes in their league for some reason and they're not telling you just to be sneaky yeah well what do you think his high is um i'm gonna go with like 10 15 oh <laughs> i still that boggles my mind like how how do you think he is the 15th best player like with... maybe kent hughes is in that league yeah <laughs> It's very possible. Uh, his ADP is 52.84, uh, high of 15, low of 88. Uh, his rank is 52. His most common draft slot is 52. So he's kind of fallen in the, those 50s. Uh, yeah, right where actually he's drafted at 51. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, also, I guess maybe because he went to L.A., people are like, well, L.A. knows what they're doing. But then at the same time, you go to L.A., I'm like, when are you ever going to make it now? <laughs> Oh, hey, I'll make it if these eight forwards in front of me all get hurt. Right. Okay. And then another one. Ah, Carolina's first pick. Gleb. Gleb. Trickasov. Uh, Trickasov. He... I feel like pre draft, he probably still went high because people talked about him a lot. Maybe after the draft. I guess he's pre... hard to tell because I feel like with how he fell, like. He would drop in drafts, but then Carolina's picking him. Makes you want to put him higher in drafts. Exactly. Yeah. So his pre-draft, he, I mean, he was drafted in all of them. Uh, 26, 35, 19, 28, 27, 39, 29, 26, 24, 39, 50. And then the NHL draft. Uh, so his ADP is 33.21, high of 17, low of 63, most common draft slots 28, ranked 29th. So, I mean, and that's right about the range that, I mean, I think it's a great value range. His average spot is good value, in my opinion. So. Cool. I will ask you only a couple more. David Goyette for Seattle. Goyette. He's been a fun one because uh, there's some people that have really beaten the drum for him. And there are other people that are like, who is this kid? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was a big drum beater for him and never selected him. And I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> I was hoping, I was like, oh, should I just grab a third and just grab him? And I was like, no, I have no room. But yeah, what um, what do we got for him? His rank is uh, 34th. Uh, his ADP is 41.22. Uh, high of 24, low of 81. Most common draft slots, 44. Hmm. That's cool. And Adam Sakura for the Rangers. And this almost ended the second round. I want to know about him because he's an interesting one. I don't. I don't know if the upside's too much there, but I also think people are thinking there's a big downside to him, and there's no downside to him, really. Well, I mean, you got, like, Fraser Minton going in front of him, Philip Bicet, Ty Nelson, those type of guys going in front of him. Uh, his ADP is 51.6. His high is 32, his low is 92. Uh, most common draft slots, 53. He's ranked 49th. And, again, I think great value. He's definitely uh, won – that take a swing on in those in those yeah. ranges yeah how about let's see let's see if i can find anyone i'm thinking of that really fell in round three or round four i don't know if you're really gonna have a lot of these guys left but i'm trying to like just recall like hmm, who is someone well or i, I, I could ask you fun ones that i'm like oh no way he would have anyone taking auto salad i have auto salad do you I do. I just picked the most awkward looking name I could see. Yeah, no, Otto Salen is his ADP is 106.42. He doesn't have a most common draft slot, obviously. <laughs> uh, his high is 76. His low is 148. He's been taken in one, two, three, four, five, six, oh. seven. Seven of 67 drafts. Okay. Well, 
also I would ask just because I know Montreal fans are kind of you know crazy they'll probably grab all their prospects they can uh, Miguel Turingay yeah he is he's one step ahead of him uh <laughs> 105.14 he was high- drafted the 216th overall in general yeah guess what his high is uh 41 39 oh. <laughs> nice you're close <laughs> Uh, pre pre NHL draft, uh, so maybe <laughs> maybe a Habs fan was uh, you know doing the whole Miss Cleo thing and just knew knew he was coming. So yeah, thirty nine. Who's a big fan? Like it's not to say he's a terrible player and won't turn out, but you know seventh mm-hmm. round is the hardest time to lot to pull out or to, to happen. I actually God was, was a Bader. Somebody posted a really good. Might have been McCollum. Somebody posted a really good uh, chart of how, you know, your first pick and then, yeah. you know, it the, slowly the dies down. Yeah. And then and then once you hit that seventh round, you actually see it pop up a little bit. Because oh, really? that's what, yeah, because that's when, I mean, it's not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but he, the chart actually does one of those just a little bit. And huh. it's the seventh round because uh, that's where their teams are taking those home run swings. So, yeah, I guess that's when they should work out. But at the same time, like, why don't you just take – the like high upside guys in round three or round four, those guys barely make it anyway. Exactly, that's great. NHL GMs, I tell yeah. you. Yeah, oh. why don't they just give us a job? I don't understand. <laughs> How about this one, Bias Patterson? Since we're going with renamed players. Oh man, I know. <laughs> so many of them. Where is he? See, I'm constantly rearranging players. Yeah, okay. keep, I mean, because 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 sometimes I don't keep them in uh, rank order because I know where a player is in certain yeah. areas of of the the sheet, and then I, I rank them at the end there. So I moved him around. So now I got him. Uh, ADP eighty three point nine two. He has a high of forty, a low of two fourteen. <laughs> a high of forty, two fourteen. He must have some massive lists. Yeah, so I mean, wow. I've received a couple drafts where I mean, yeah, they're they're two hundred deep, and uh, I love them and I curse them because <laughs> holy, holy cow, logging them is a huge pain. But uh, I yeah, guess people should uh, send you a tip of some money for that, eh? Right, I, I respect the process. You know, I, I have thought about monetizing the the project, but at the same time, like it's user contributions. And stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I spent a crap ton of time doing this stuff, but I mean, it's it's a labor of love, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just stoked that other people, you know, enjoy it. So I think I think it's something that you need also more people submitting before you can even think to be like, hey, maybe throw me two bucks and I'll send you the Google Doc itself or something like that. Right, right. Or a link to it, like that could be something. But yeah, just maybe an idea. But um. So I guess quickly, I thought that just came out to my head. And I think this was a previous one that I have edited out, but people won't know that. But I guess they will now. Um, <laughs> a player that's like um, not drafted, but is drafted in the league under different rules, like a college signee or like a Russian UFA. Do you just exclude them all together from your ranking? Uh, yeah. So I basically, if I'm seeing them drafted in the drafts, I'll include them. And uh, I think the only non-drafted player that I have uh, in this is uh, the twin, Hugo Hovland. Uh, oh, okay. Also. Not, uh, Kuzmenko too, right? Or no? Uh, no. Uh, so I used to track leftovers, like actual leftovers uh, in the first year. And it just got to be too much because I'd be bouncing yeah. sheets <laughs> trying to. <laughs> and uh, it, it just got too overwhelming. I have had that question asked a couple of times, you know, because there are lots of leagues out there that have leftovers and want to know, you know, where, where guys are going. So what I did was uh, I did a Twitter post on, you know, the common names I'm seeing. Uh, there wasn't in any order or anything like that. Uh, I think I can pull it up. Yeah, and Kuzmenko, Kuzmenko is obviously the top leftover that I've seen going. Uh, Joshua Roy is another really popular one. Uh, Janice Moser, Nathan Smith, uh, Nick Blankenberg, William DeFour uh, has gotten oh, a lot yeah. of buzz lately. Brandon Coe is another one. Uh, Ryan Ufko, Antonio Stranges. 
Okay, so basically, people people forgot in other drafts and redrafted them because maybe that's the rule, right? The so or... exactly leftovers. Uh, so the Russians, uh, Dmitry Rashovinsky, uh, Arseny uh, Gritsyuk, uh, yeah. Michael Benning. <laughs> I, I know you guys talked about Michael Benning. It made me smile because I'm, I'm I'm on the Michael Benning train. You know, yeah. another <laughs> small D guy that I'm a, a fan of. Um, Albert Johansson t- talking about in CBY. I trust another one that's yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, Josh Doan has been one that was kind of passed over that. Now yeah. I think everyone some hyped hype. him because they're like, Oh, this is more of a nepotism one. And then he actually sort of played awesome. Yeah. Draft one year. So it's like, Oh shit, maybe we were wrong. <laughs> yeah. I think he's a captain this year too. So we shall see. Yeah. Well, that was the next one you wanted to talk with leftovers. Do you have anyone else that's possibly you wanted to mention or. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, pr- I think I pretty much, uh, covered it. Uh, it, it really depends on your league. Uh, this year, uh, like I said, I, I, I can't remember what, what was recorded, what wasn't, you know, our, ch- our pre-chat, uh, talking about my league and uh, how I, I lean very leftover heavy and, uh, but guys in my league are starting to lean leftover heavy as well, which kind of <laughs> takes the pool down a little bit. So when normally, I kind of flip trends, whatever the majority of the league is doing, I try and do the opposite. So uh, I have been not following the leftovers as closely because I didn't really see any that really stuck out that really tickled my fancy. And so then that's why I've been combing uh, this year's draft a little bit harder than normal. Yeah, and I'm with you. I think people are underrating this draft on in the end. I think we're going to see a lot more NHL than I think people thought. Yep. There's lots of good skill here. Yeah. Well, and I mean, COVID, COVID's yeah. thrown everything off, you know, and I mean, it's, I totally get the scouts point of view and I totally get, you know, it's, they didn't see great hockey. No one really stood yeah. out and everything else. So, you know, does it get a, a rap as a, a bad draft or do, is it just lack of games? Is it lack of, you know, maybe the quality of hockey it, as a whole and in general was a bit lower because everybody wasn't up to speed. Yeah, I found I was also a little able to, in this draft, you're maybe more able, at least I was somewhat, to sort of exploit it with getting picks for cheaper than you would in other drafts. Like, Mm -hmm. 2023 picks are very expensive right now, even for second-round picks or third-round picks. They're like, no, I don't want to give it up. Not going to be third-round, but maybe second-round. But first, second-round picks are, like, impossible to get. But I found, like, getting 2022 picks, people are like, yeah, sure, whatever. (laughs) Thank you. No, I was like, okay, yeah. Well, I kind of exploited it for one person in my league, but that's just because he has so many picks in this year and next year. And I'm like, dude, you have, I'm the only one offering you a trade. Like, you might as well just take it. And he's like, yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I am a uh, trader. I trade as much as possible. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because, I mean, I lose a ton of trades, but I also win a bunch of trades. And it's the volume of it, you know, it usually uh, ends up, as a win and when the full, you know, the averages smooth out and uh, looking at other, I know a lot of people send trade offers because they want a player or they're looking, you know, what it's going to do for their roster and they're not looking at other teams. And I think that the thing that's really helped me and worked for me is looking at what the other teams makeup is and how it's formed and then targeting those type of things. Like if uh, a team needs a goalie, obviously there's a better chance I'm going to make a trade giving them a goalie than I would a team that has three goalies. And the same goes, you know, what reminded me of this is when you say, well, the guy has a ton of picks. Yeah. I mean, every year you'll run into a a guy who has too many picks. He's not going to be able to roster, roster all those picks. So he's obviously not going to value those picks as highly as somebody that only has two or three picks, you know? So it's all in kind of the other team's roster should dictate your trade offers. And I don't think people utilize that as much as they should. It also helps like someone like that could want to upgrade their picks too, instead of just like, exactly. Exactly. So it depends where your picks land. Like I said, 2023 picks, like in the first round, are almost worth two firsts for a 2022 draft or something like that. Yeah. Well, I just made a, a, a trade with Joel Henderson. Uh, he traded me Bergeron, and I, I gave up uh, two first rounders, basically, you know, for the rental. But uh, <laughs> I'm going for it this year. I'm coming for you, Hayden. Uh, Hayden, you're next. No, 
and he told me I, I you know i had pick 15 and i was going to give him pick 15 and another first he goes oh i don't want 20 22 picks i said whatever you want 23 24 <laughs> fine by me i'll pick this year i don't have any yeah. problem with it yeah so. so then if your pick next year is uh lower then that's good lower is in the lower to 30 range well i have to win for it to be lower but you know let's let's well let's just say it will be knock on wood won't jinx it yeah done but yeah that's pretty much it i don't think we have anything more to talk about um it's getting late where you are that it is your wife probably wants to go to sleep Uh, oh no she's no she's good no not (laughs) even not even one death stare so i think we're doing good no i i have to ask you though you know since we've uh you know talked on twitter a few times and why am i so better than gifs at you oh I don't yeah know. I yeah, yeah so good no i know exactly in the gif wars but what's up with you trolling jim matheson man? i am not trolling him i love jim matheson <laughs> everyone thinks i'm trolling him but i love jim jim is my hero jim, jim. if you're listening <laughs> if you want to come on the draft cast i will gladly have you on and jim, chat. jim please join he's your biggest fan I am his biggest fan. I think I put that in my Twitter bio. (laughs) I am Jim Madden. Jim Madden knows how to Twitter. And like, I wish I could Twitter that good. (laughs) Every time, every time I see a response, it it, it puts a smile (laughs) on my face. I'm just saying, just so you know. Oh man. I had to know. I put a smile on Jim's face too. (laughs) Curiosity, man. Killed the cat. (laughs) Yeah. I love Jim. And that's that's all it is. Jim is my hero. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah i guess that's all for that this week you can follow us us on twitter mine is at fhp quinn q u i n n um and tyler yours is at uh mats and hockey m-a-t-s-o-n hockey yeah and um so people need to send more submissions to tyler we want more than 67 i would love more than 67 i'm uh, shooting for 100 i want to say last year i got 79 no, uh, what so, made it go backwards? You think you did a bad job? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, I actually, I actually did a, a poll and asked, uh, you know, how many. I'm expecting another 30 or so drafts just from oh, that okay. poll. So, oh, okay, good. I think, yeah, I think there's still some uh, drafts out there waiting to be had. So, hopefully, uh, the info and the ADP uh, projects uh, helping some guys prep for their for their drafts. And people can send submissions to you only by DM on Twitter, or do you also want them by email? Uh, you can just DM me, uh, and, or, you know, reach out to me on Twitter and I can give you my email if, uh, that you feel more comfortable doing it that way, but I'm, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. And, uh, however you want to shoot them my way, I'll, I'll take them. Yeah. Well, more people interact with you on Twitter and see that I'm better at it than you. No, <laughs> <Basically, laughs> gifts. Uh, I think just, that's just because you said I won. And I was like, okay. no, hey, yeah, I gave you, I give you one W, and then it's oh, just you're the, never hear the, the champ. You're the champ forever. Okay, yeah. I got sort you. Of like you with Hayden, I know Hay- all Hayden does on Twitter now is just talk about how much better he is at the DFPHL Hockey League. Yeah, well, I know I gave him credit. I said, oh, all hell Hayden. And then from then on, I think it went straight to his head. So <laughs> I know. I just see him tweeting, which is hilarious. <laughs> I'm just kidding because he doesn't tweet enough, Hayden. Yeah. Shout out tweet, to Hayden. Tweet more. Tweet, t- tweet more. Yeah. Seem more confident in your win, too. Yeah. Oh, but no. Anyway. He's, he's proud of it. Trust me. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> you get emails of him being like, <laughs> just with the score. <laughs> Um, uh, okay yeah but anyway so yeah so that's actually it i always have this awkwardly don't worry um so don't forget to like and subscribe everyone um yeah the emails i didn't say the email but you can send twitter dms also to the draftcast at dauber draftcast or tweet it i i i use it but i don't log in enough i'm so bad at having like one twitter account i have two now i have to manage like be better pat be better i'll send all the all all jeff wars from now on are going to the draft cast <laughs> okay <laughs> then you're gonna be like why does no one respond and i'm like oops sorry My- sorry log on here you go <laughs> sorry so sorry okay okay i guess bye everybody all right thanks pat i appreciate <laughs> yeah. it man you take no her problem. easy you too